In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Show us, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who willed that your word should take on the reality of human flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary. Grant, we pray, that we who confess our Redeemer to be God and man may merit to become partakers even in his divine nature, who lives and reigns with you, with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld, or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David, is it not enough for you to weary people? Must you also weary my God? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall be with child and bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. The word of the Lord.
justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips as your Lord A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, is it impossible that the blood of bulls and goats takes away sins? For this reason, when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offerings you do not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In holocausts and sin offerings, you took no delight. Then I said, as is written of me in the scroll, behold, I come to do your will, O God. First, he says, sacrifices and offerings, holocausts and sin offerings, you neither desired nor delighted in. These are offered according to the law. Then he says, behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will, we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, 
has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who is called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. One note on Mary's questioning before her fiat. Her fiat is her yes, right? That's a a Latin word. It's great for everybody to know. Fiat is not the Italian car. It's Mary's yes uh, to, to the Lord. Her question beforehand is still full of faith. How shall it be? I know they translated it, how can it be? Uh, but how shall it be? Um, she knows it's going to be because the Lord says it's going to be. And her question is so different from Zechariah's question, right? Zechariah gets struck dumb and can't speak. Remember his question when the angel tells him that Elizabeth is going to bear, his question is, how shall I know it? Totally different verb, to know. How shall I know it? Well, an angel is telling you on behalf of God, that's how you shall know it. Uh, so his question is totally different. It doesn't, it, it's not, it lacks faith. Mary's is just, how will it be? because it's so much beyond uh, what we understand in the natural realm. So then she, her fiat confirms that she's totally open to the Lord's uh, will, as mysterious as it is. Here's a homily from St. Leo the Great. The mystery of man's reconciliation with God. And what's beautiful is all the the opposites, the profound opposites that normally look like they couldn't be together, they're together in Jesus Christ. So it's beautiful. Uh, Pope St. Leo the Great. Lowliness is assured by majesty, weakness by power, mortality by eternity. To pay the debt of our sinful state, a nature that was incapable of suffering was joined to one that could suffer. Thus, in keeping with the healing that we needed, one and the same mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ, was able to die in one nature and unable to die in the other. He who is true God was therefore born in the complete and perfect nature of a true man, whole in his nature, whole in ours. By our nature, we mean what the Creator had fashioned in us from the beginning, human nature, and took to himself in order to restore it. For in the Savior, there was no trace of what the deceiver introduced and man being misled allowed to enter what Adam and Eve gave into. No trace of that whatsoever in Jesus. It does not follow that because he submitted to sharing in our human weakness, he therefore shared in our sins. No, he shared in everything short of sin. He took the nature of a servant without stain of sin, enlarging our humanity without diminishing his divinity. Spend the rest of your life meditating on how that worked. He emptied himself. Though invisible, he made himself visible. Though creator and lord of all things, he chose to be one of us mortal men. Yet this was the condescension of compassion, the lowering of coming down to our level of compassion, not the loss of omnipotence. So he comes down to our level, but he doesn't lose any of his almighty power. So he who in the nature of God 
had created man, became in the nature of a servant, man himself. Thus the Son of God enters this lowly world. He comes down from the throne of heaven, yet does not separate himself from the Father's glory. He is born in a new condition by a new birth. He was born in a new condition, for invisible in his own nature, he became visible in ours. Beyond our grasp, he chose to come within our grasp. Existing before time began, he began to exist at a moment in time. In his human nature, there's a beginning. In his divine nature, no beginning. Lord of the universe, he hid his infinite glory and took the nature of a servant. Incapable of suffering as God, he did not refuse to be a man capable of suffering. Immortal, he chose to be subject to the laws of death. He who is true God is also true man. There is no falsehood in this unity as long as the lowliness of man and the preeminence of God coexist in mutual relationship. Again, meditate on that for the rest of your life. As God does not change by his condescension, he's coming down to our level, as God does not change by his condescension, so man is not swallowed up by being exalted. The humanity is real, still there, still full, not overwhelmed. Each nature exercises its own activity in communion with the other. The word does what is proper to the word, the eternal divine word. The flesh fulfills human nature. The flesh fulfills what is proper to the flesh. One nature is resplendent with miracles. The other falls victim to injury. Jesus could be injured in his human nature. As the word does not lose equality with the Father's glory, the divine word, so the flesh, humanity, does not leave behind the nature of our race. They're each, they each keep their nature. One and the same person, this must be said over and over again, is truly the Son of God and truly the Son of Man. He is God in virtue of the fact that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He is man in virtue of the fact that the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So Pope St. Leo the Great. And that joining of humanity and divinity in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary is the beginning of uh, the history that leads up to the Eucharist. We're able to receive him because she said yes, and he became a man, perfectly divine, perfectly human. Stand to profess our faith, and we remember that where normally we would bow, we're going to genuflect during the creed because we celebrate the incarnation today. He didn't just become a man December 25th, nine months earlier, a child's a child from the moment of conception. So on this day, the church asks us to bow in reverence for this is the day we really recognize him becoming a man for the first time. We profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, 
he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With great t trust in our Lord's goodness and mercy towards us, we bring to him our needs. For the Pope and all bishops, may the Holy Spirit continue to outpour upon them the gift of a shepherding heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civic leaders, may God guide them in working diligently to promote the good of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all expectant mothers, may the Lord surround them with the support they need as they bring life into the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, may God strengthen our faith and help us to grow in understanding. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in baptism with Christ, may the Lord welcome them into his eternal kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for hearing our petitions. We ask that you use these prayers joined to the sacred heart of your Son in this Eucharist to accomplish your glory. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, Almighty God, to accept your church's offering, so that she who is aware that her beginnings lie in the incarnation of your only begotten Son may rejoice to celebrate his mysteries on this solemnity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the Virgin Mary heard with faith that the Christ was to be born among men, and for men's sake, by the overshadowing, overshadowing power of the Holy Spirit. Lovingly she bore him in her immaculate womb, that the promises to the children of Israel might come about, and the hope of nations be accomplished beyond all telling. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Daniel our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, 
and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. Forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. 
Confirm in our minds the mysteries of the true faith, we pray, O Lord, so that confessing that he who was conceived of the Virgin Mary is true God and true man, we may through the saving power of his resurrection merit to attain eternal joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Saint Joseph, protector of holy church and terror of demons.